Hi there and welcome to the Stats Plus video, The Rise of the Sans Serif. In the last few years, there's been a big shift in branding. Many high-profile companies have redesigned their logos and replaced classical serifs with sans serif typefaces. The popularity of social media and digital display has influenced the way we think about typefaces and brand development. In this video, we will start by looking into the development of sans serif fonts, and then we will see what makes them great with some examples from Envato Elements, and go through a few tips when choosing one for your next project. Sans serif fonts started developing slowly before the 18th century, but were in use widely. In 1816, William Castle IV created a sans serif typeface called Two Lines English Egyptian. The Figgins Foundry in London released a grotesque sans serif in 1830. At this point, sans serifs were called grotesque due to their malformations. The font was condensed and bold so it grabbed attention instantly and was mainly used for advertising. Later, in the 1920s and 30s, the Bauhaus School made geometric sans serifs popular as a reaction to the embellished Art Nouveau style. Futura, one of the most popular geometric sans serif styles, was released in 1928. Geometric sans serifs feature strong geometric lines that follow the ethos of the Bauhaus. In the 1960s, the international typographic style took over the design world with their neo-grotesque fonts, Helvetica and Universe. This modernist movement emphasized the use of clean and minimalist layouts. These fonts feature a non-nonsense anatomy. Many have extensive families that would make them suitable for anything designers would need, from headings to body copy. Sans serif typefaces went through another evolution process in the 1970s. At this point, typefaces were lacking the human touch. Humanist fonts were inspired by traditional serifs and calligraphy. Gil Sands, for instance, included similar forms to those found in Helvetica, but it's less geometric. Humanist sans serifs were a response to the overly used neo-grotesque style. Therefore, the typeface is friendlier and more relaxed. So why is sans serif so appealing? These type of fonts are sleek, sophisticated, and depending who you ask, legible. Many designers still believe that serifs rule the printed media world. Sans serifs are increasingly becoming popular as body copy, with great legible typefaces being currently developed. Sans serifs do take the win when it comes to digital displays. Our screens have improved in the last decade and serifs tend to glare quite a bit in digital displays. Serif fonts tend to be conservative, classic, and often classified as feminine. Sans serifs, on the other hand, are more gender neutral and highly adaptable. Sans serif typefaces offer that trend fluidity that brands are looking for. Most recently, we have seen a rebrand of many labels switching from classic serifs to sans serif font. So you might be wondering when to choose a sans serif font. It is important to know that sans serif fonts aren't the right fit for every brand. When you're redesigning or designing a logo from scratch, examine the brand very carefully. Be specific about your brand what its personality is, and what you want it to communicate. If you do end up choosing a sans serif font, make sure that you're balancing your design with originality. So choosing the right font is one of the most important parts of the design process. A thoughtfully chosen typeface can be the foundation that brings a brand together. If you're looking for that cool, sophisticated look and feel, take a look at a few of our suggestions. Envato Elements has an extensive font library that can help you choose the one typeface for your next project. From all of us at Tuts Plus, we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.